All right, sorry for the lack of videos. My laptop has blown up, so this is going to be edited on the phone and all the rest of it. But I want to talk about the new Specialized SL8. Um, the review, like the actual pictures have been leaked for a while, but I found the stat sheet and I'm pretty sure it's accurate. So anyway, we'll kind of go through it. Uh, so first of all is just the general aesthetics. The back of the bike looks very similar. They said there's a smaller seat post, like thinner. I don't know if there is, or I assume there is, but it's not really that noticeable. The big thing is kind of like the front of the fork. It looks weird, like the head tube. It looks elongated like you would have originally to hide cables. It kind of looks like a nose cone, which is actually what they call it. Um, and I assume that's for aerodynamics. I assume it's because the three to one rule has gone and they said it's more aero than the Venge now. The previous one was not as aero as the last Venge. So I guess it's made some aerodynamic improvements, which is good. I think aesthetically, it does not look attractive at all. I think in reality, if you're buying this bike, it will be faster, but I think aesthetically the SL7 looks significantly better. They also are really, uh, launched it with the new handlebars, which came out a little bit before this bike, uh, that integrated bar and stem and all the rest of it. So again, pretty nice all round. I think the headline stats really is the weight. The weight of the frame I found was 680 grams, which is only 100 grams more than the Athos, which is pretty wild, maybe 150. But what it means is that you can have a mega light bike. So one of the weights quoted was that for an SL8 with Durace Di2, 60 mil rims, it was 6.6 .6 kilos. Okay, bottle cages and pedals, it's getting to 6.8, 6.9, but that's very competitive. You know, compared to a factor, it's similar and it's way more error than a factor. And it's also not a factor, so it won't break. So that is actually a really big thing from Specialized that the weight has come down significantly. And for me, if the aerodynamic properties are good, I don't know why you'd have the Venge because it's so like this bike and it looks pretty aero. People still think the Avenge could come back in a Dura, uh, in a SRAM Red build. It's going to be a little bit more. It's going to be about 200 grams more for a SRAM Red build. And what they were also saying was that the Pro version, which is the version just below the S-Works, um, and it's still outrageously expensive, but it's slightly less expensive, that frame weight was still sub 800 grams, which is mega, mega light. In comparison, if you're talking to like a pure aero bike, like the Scott Foil top of the range is like 920, similar to the Canyon Aero. Um, and then the factor is light, the O2 VAM. I think that's like 680 or something. That's stupidly light as well. So, you know, it's a similar weight-ish to the factor, I reckon, but way more aero. So I think it is an interesting improvement from Specialized. I do think, you know, the price is always outraged. I haven't seen any numbers, but I can imagine if the Madon frame set is five and a half, the Specialized one's got to be close to five, five and a half for a frame set, which is absolutely bonkers. And yeah, so I think in reality, is it a good buy? No, unless you've got a lot of disposable income. I mean, it's like one of those things where, yeah, you know, a lot of people could afford it, but it's like, do you want to spend that much money on a bike? I don't know. However, the bling of having an S work is undeniable. And I do think that's why it will sell a lot. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.